Hello, and welcome to NSO at Home Live, a concert series created by the musicians of the National Symphony Orchestra. My name is Marissa Regney. I'm the principal second violinist of the National Symphony Orchestra. I'll be your host tonight and every Sunday night as we bring live music into your homes and hopefully into your hearts. This is our third week of our show. It's going great. Thanks to all of you for tuning in, for your support and your enthusiasm. We're so excited that we're bringing our music to not just the Washington DC area, but all throughout the United States and throughout the world. So that's really thrilling for us. And also we're being broadcast not only on the Facebook page of the NSO Musicians and our own YouTube channel, but through the Facebook and YouTube channels of uh, the Kennedy Center as well. So this is really exciting times for us. And thank you all for being here. Last week, we had a great show. We had a pack of Pekarskis performing. We had Pavel Pekarskis, a member of the first violin section of the orchestra, his wife Stella, and four of their six children joined us. It was super fun, great music. And we have another wonderful program for tonight. We have principal flutist Aaron Goldman, violinists Glenn Donnellan and Jan Chong, and cellist Eugenia Chang with some great music and some wonderful, really uplifting stories to tell. So let's not waste any time. Let's go straight over to Aaron Goldman, who awaits us. There he is. Hey, Aaron, how's it going? Things are good. It's great to see you, Marissa. It's really good to see you, even though you're a tiny speck on my screen. I'm so happy to see you and I cannot wait to hear you play. And this is very exciting because you have a world premiere that you're about to do, right? That's right. This piece was sent to me by uh, a good friend, Rose Grace, a pianist from Florida. She sent me this piece and I've been playing it over the last couple of weeks. And I thought this would be a great piece to play for this NSO at home. And it was really written for these times. And I think it really captures you know, the world we're living in at the moment. It's awesome. Cannot wait to hear it. And we're really lucky because tonight we have with us the composer. Now, it's not often that the audiences or even the musicians get to meet the composer all the time and really understand, you know, what was the, the creative process behind the music. And so we have the composer, Philip Wharton, joining us from New York City tonight. Where's Hey, Phil? guys. There he is. Hey, Philip. Hi there. Welcome. Thank so you. Good to see you. So, so Philip and I went to school together back at the Eastman School of Music. Um, well, longer than I, longer ago than I would like to admit. <laughs> no, it was just last week. It was just last week. But it's so good to see you again. And thank you so much for being here and to tell us all about this wonderful piece that you wrote. Um, can you tell us a little bit about it and what inspired you to write it? Sure. So um, as soon as we went on to lockdown here in New York City, I'm fortunate enough to live right next door to Central Park. And so at night when there were a few people in the park and you could appropriately do social distancing, I would walk in the park. And with all the sounds of the city pretty much gone, I was really aware of all the bird calls that was going on in the trees. And I noticed that there weren't the associated bird watchers. Because right now it's migratory season and you're used to seeing all these people who are just really avid fans about seeing the latest visitor to the park. And so I thought, I wondered if the birds wondered where we were. And so that inspired the piece is like, where did the watchers go? Because all of a sudden we aren't there. And so sometimes you get an idea and it just sparks your creativity and it just flows out of you. So this piece really just took about a day to write, which is unusual for a composer. Usually we struggle a bit more. Yeah. That's amazing. And so I'm just curious, is this the first time you've ever had one of your pieces performed, the world premiere performed virtually? Absolutely, it's a brave new world. Yeah, it really is. But the, but the silver lining is that it's being heard all throughout the United States and even uh, throughout the world. So that's a good thing, right? Yeah, it's absolutely fabulous. I'm really excited. You know, I've always said that composers are mute without performers. And so it's really great to have Aaron play the piece. Yeah, we're really excited to hear it. And when you're not busy composing, uh, you're a violinist. I mean, that's when we went to Eastman together. You were studying violin and you're also a teacher. So you're, you're a busy man there in New York City. Yeah, and I mean, teaching virtually is also an interesting, brave new world. But you know, we're figuring out how to do these things. Yeah, well, thank you so much for being with us. I'm so excited to hear this piece, Where Are the Watchers? And we're gonna bring back Aaron for this world premiere.
Bravo. That was beautiful. And bravo to Philip, too, writing that in the day. It was fantastic. Um, I, I, think I, can't think, I can't think of a better uh, instrument to depict the birds than the flute. Yeah, I will say uh, composers often, of course, write uh, the flute to be a bird. Uh, it's always interesting to think about why composers would make choices like that. Uh, I think for the bird and the flute, a lot of it has to do with the tessitura, of course. Uh, but in this case, I think Philip really captured uh, the feeling of the piece by writing it for the flute. And really, I couldn't imagine him writing it for another instrument. So. Yeah, it was fantastic. Actually, uh, a year ago in May, when the orchestra was at Carnegie Hall performing, uh, my husband and daughter came along with me and we went into Central Park. They're big birders. And so we went uh, one morning to go birding. And I don't know what's more fun, watching the birds or watching the birders watch the birds. <laughs> so you brought back very fond memories. So thank you for that. Um, if you're following us on Facebook and Instagram, you, you may have seen there was a video that was posted of Aaron practicing this piece. You're in your home with the windows open. Your neighbors must love that. Do they love that when you play and you open your windows? Yeah, they like it though. Um, you know, oftentimes I leave the front door open too. We try to get, you know, some of the, the light in and yeah, people walking down the street can hear it all the time. But, you know, we try to make music and fill the world with music. That's what we do. Absolutely. They'll probably get to hear more of you practicing more than ever now too, right? Because you're home more. I home all the time, but it's got yeah. it's a great time to practice. Yeah. Well, you sound fabulous as you always do. It's such a pleasure to hear you and it's such a pleasure to see you. And I can't wait to see you on the stage, I hope sometime soon, I hope. <laughs> so take care, be healthy, thank you so much. You sounded beautiful. Great, thank you. Thank you everyone watching, bye. So just wanna remind everybody that you can follow us on our Facebook page, NSO Musicians, 
on our Instagram is NSO underscore musicians. And we have a YouTube channel as well, NSO musicians. Please subscribe. We're trying to get more subscribers to our YouTube channel. But on all of those uh, platforms, we're always posting videos and pictures and things that we've been up to. And one of our latest projects is the Beethoven Seventh Symphony. Um, our principal trumpet player, Billy Gerlach, produced magnificently uh, the finale of Beethoven Seven. We all recorded our parts, sent them to Billy, and he pieced it together. And it's really quite um, fantastic. He did an amazing job. And it's great to see us and hear us playing a Beethoven symphony together um, virtually. So please uh, look out for that. We encourage you to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Now our next performer is, um, is just, this is a great, great story of inspiration, grit, perseverance, and a lot of love. Uh, Glenn Donnellan has been a member of the National Symphony since 1997. He's a terrific violinist. He's very versatile. He plays everything from Bach to rock and roll. And our local viewers probably would recognize him because he invented something called the electric slugger. It's a Louisville slugger baseball bat that he turned into an electric violin and he often plays it at the Washington Nationals games, plays the national anthem. He's a superstar, everybody loves him. Um, but backstage, we love him also because he's just got the most wonderful sense of humor and he's always positive. He's just a great sense of, of joy all the time. And in February of 2019, we were backstage actually during a concert and intermission and Glenn had an episode. He was, um, I was with him at the time along with a colleague of ours, Carol Evans, and he had some sort of medical episode. We weren't sure what was happening, but we helped him and um, he was sent home. And the next day he was diagnosed with a massive brain tumor and he was then in the hospital for almost six months. Um, needless to say, the road to recovery has been a very long, arduous journey. It's been really tough. Um, but we have dubbed ourselves Team Donnellan. Um, there's been, it takes a village, they say, and a, a village he has, a lot of people that love him, his friends, his colleagues, and his family, and everybody has rallied around him. And leading the pack um, is his extraordinary wife, Jan Chong. She too is a terrific violinist. She has been a substitute violinist with, for the National Symphony for several decades now, and um, actually has been filling in for Glenn while he's on medical leave. And she has just been um, an amazing source of strength and inspiration. They both are. They're, they're, it's really quite heroic what they have managed to achieve. And so we're so happy that they'll be joining us. And without further ado, let's head straight over to Glenn and Jan's home.
thank you for joining us. This song has a very special place in our hearts. My Uncle Danny, the youngest of nine kids. <laughs> he passed away during the Vietnam War, and we recorded this for his sister, older sister, Aunt Nancy, last December, just before she passed. We miss you, Aunt Nancy. Nancy. Our next song is Mona Lisa, the first song on a playlist that I made and played for Glenn after his surgery. When he was at Hopkins, there were times when the only way I could reach him was through music. I knew he was in there and that he was still Glenn by the way his eyes responded to our songs. Now this song reminds us of how far he has come and how music helped us stay connected during those very dark times. Here is Mona Lisa. I'd like to thank our family, our friends, our colleagues, and all of my fans for all of your support and love during these challenging months. Jan started a concert series, Saturday Serenades, to share our music during these difficult times. Thank you for listening week to week. During these unprecedented and uncertain times, we need hope, which is what this last song is about. Through the transformative power of music, we will heal and someday meet again in the concert halls. Until then, please keep tuning in and thank you for listening.
Wow. Thank you, Glenn and Jan. I'm teary listening to you guys. You're such an inspiration. Just, um, I miss you guys and I'm just, you guys are heroes. So thank you so much for that. Um, I want to remind everybody you can follow them, their website, musicheelsglennjan.com. Um, they've also got a YouTube channel and Instagram. Please follow them. They post content every week. They've got a new tune that they put up and um, it's just good for the heart and soul, I have to say. It's amazing. Oh, <laughs> thanks for that, Jan and Glenn. <laughs> um, so I just want to let you know we will not be on live next week because next weekend is Memorial Day weekend. Normally the orchestra heads over to the West Lawn of the Capitol and we participate in the National Memorial Day concert um, that's broadcast on PBS. Obviously that concert is not taking place this year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The show will be broadcast, however, they're using, I think, some clips from former shows and they have some new content that they'll be putting on. In fact, this past week, um, a very small group of us went to the concert hall at the Kennedy Center and were able to record some content for that concert. We practiced social distancing. We were very, very far apart from each other on the stage, but it still was um, remarkable to be together, just uh, there were 10 of us, and just to play music together, to see my colleagues in 3D instead of on a Zoom call or on a screen was, was um, it was just remarkable. So please tune in for that concert. You can check your local PBS listings for the information, but that's next Sunday night. So we will not be here next Sunday night. Um, and last but not least, I know I said Glenn is, um, our inspiration and our humor. Our last performer, I would say, is the ray of sunshine of the National Symphony Orchestra. She is so bubbly, so I just, you know, she makes everybody smile that she comes anywhere near. <laughs> so, so excited to hear her. Plus, she's an amazing musician. Cellist Eugenia Chang Hi. is joining us. <laughs> There she is. I mean, so happy to see you. I miss your infectious laugh and you just, you make everybody happy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, it's so nice to see you. I, I, I miss you. Um, nice have you, you, been, you, have you been um, keeping busy during the quarantine? I don't know. I think my stomach's been busy. I've been eating so much carbs. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. They should call it carb 19 instead of yeah. 19, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so you're going to play a bit of Bach for us, right? There's nothing that quite uh, soothes as, like, as meditative as, as Bach, right? Yes, I'll play a movement of um, the third suite, beret one and beret two, and a beret is like a dance. So if you guys want to get up and dance for the first beret, go ahead. <laughs> All right. I'm going to. My camera is going to be taken off of me, but I'll be dancing. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Take it away. Thanks. Thank you. 
to round it off with the low beefy sounds of the of the cello. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> and and Bach is kind of like the meat and potatoes for our string players, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of what we go back to all the time. Bach. Yes, all the time. I, I've been playing here and there like every day. So it's been really fun. Good. Excellent. Um, so next you're going to play for us a bit of Schubert, right? This is um, a very sort of meditative calming well this is very calming way beautiful way to end on a sunday night um it's uh the name of the piece du bis de diru and it was a schubert song written yes. with, you know mezzo soprano and and piano played of course you're not going to sing are you oh <laughs> <laughs> no you're going to play on the top but i thought this was very interesting because last week pavel pekarski played for us another schubert song der Ölkönig that was arranged for violin. Mm -hmm. And this is a very different type of song. So if you watched last week, you may remember uh, we read the poem, Der Ulkonig. It's a very tragic poem about a, a man who loses his little boy, his little boy dies. And the music is very frenzied and dramatic. You'll notice when Eugenia plays this next piece, it's just very, very calm and beautiful. It's, it's a romantic poem. And so um, I thought maybe since we heard the, the poem last week read, it would be nice to read the poem this, was, this week as well. So you would get a sense of what the music is depicting. So this is Du bist du Ru by Frederick Rueckert. You are my rest, my calm and peace. You are longing and what stills it. Full of joy and grief, I consecrate to you my, eye, my eyes and my heart as a dwelling place. Come in to me and softly close the gate behind you. Drive all other grief from my breast. Let my heart be full of your joy. The temple of my eyes is lit by your radiance alone. Oh, fill it completely. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Bravo. Thank you, Eugenia. What a perfect way to end on a Sunday night. This has been such a wonderful evening, such a great variety of music, and um, it was warms my heart to see all of my colleagues and just hear them play so magnificently. So thank you all, Aaron, Jan, Glenn, Eugenia, for your beautiful music and your, just your presence this evening. Thanks to all of you for watching, for tuning in, for supporting us and the arts during this unprecedented time. It really means the world to us. Um, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. We're always posting content. Just a reminder, next week we will not be here, but please tune in to your local PBS station for the National Memorial Day concert on the West Lawn of the Capitol. And um, you'll see a spattering of NSO musicians that um, Art will be participating. And we'll be back, NSO Live, um, two weeks from today. So May 31st at 7 p.m. We will be coming to you live from my house. <laughs> That's right, I will not only be hosting, I will be performing as well. I'll be playing the violin and I will be joined by my fabulous family, my husband Henry and our daughter Sophie. Um, we're gonna do some fiddle tunes. We're gonna get the guitar and the ukulele and the violin. And we're gonna be doing um, a wonderful story for solo violin and narrator that is great for the young and young at heart. So please join us in two weeks from Annandale, Virginia. We're very excited. Um, I wanna quickly thank our fearless producer, Bob Reardon and Jamie Roberts. Amazing, they're behind the scenes making all the magic work and also Thomas Baker for his beautiful artwork. And thank you to all of you for tuning in, supporting us. You're the best, we love you. We can't wait to see you in two weeks. In the meantime, stay healthy, stay safe. Thanks for everything, good night.